belongs to God. We're doing it through reaching, teaching, restoring, and building. Winning back what belongs to God. Design Global Ministries Way. Thank you for joining us for Mission Possible with Freddie T. Pyfus Jr. of Zion Global Ministries. Let's take a listen. Thank you so much for joining us for this week of Mission Possible. We are so grateful that you continue to join us week after week. We are in week number 17, so we appreciate your consistency. We appreciate your support. This week, we are going to dive into something that... Um, we may take for granted here in the United States that other countries don't have access to, and that is water. Um, we're going to start with the scripture, um, Job chapter 5, verse 8. Job talks about a God who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth, sendeth waters upon the fields. Now, we see a lot of rain even this morning when we woke up. We heard the rain. Throughout our day as we were driving, we saw the rain on our windshield. We saw it looking out of our windows. Now, we could complain about it or we could see it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, when I went out this morning to feed my dogs, it looked cloudy and I knew the rain was coming. And I said, God, I thank you for the rain. Yeah. And here in this city, here, as you said, in the United States, we take our access to water for granted. Um, but there are people uh, around the globe who don't have access right. to rain. And so to begin this session, I want us to not only think about the natural rain, but the spiritual rain in this season. And to start us off, to get us focused, we'll listen to William McDowell, Send the Rain. Sound of revival. Oh God, we want it now. I don't know about you, but I'm sensing this. God, we need it. And hear the cry of your people, God. Wow, what an incredible song that resonates or should resonate with each and every one of us. When I wake up in the morning, my daughter and I, we have access to running water, and we don't even think twice about it. We'll go in the kitchen, we'll fix us a bowl of oatmeal, we'll run the water, boil it. We have access to all of these things, to a hot shower, and we don't even think about it when we turn the faucet on. We just believe that when we turn that faucet, that one running water, that clean water is going to be available to us. And sometimes we forget to say thank you, God, for allowing us to have access to this. Right. We don't even think about the things that we have access to that other people don't have access to or may have to go through God knows what to get it. Oh, how blessed we are to just get a cup of water here in this city, here in the United States. Let me take you to Sakuru, which is in Kenya. Okay. And we have several churches there in Sakuru. Uh, the first time that I went there, it was a pretty amazing experience. Um, we first landed in Nairobi. And before we went out, to our place that was designated by the team leader. Um, that night I had a dream and I dreamt that we were in a Jeep and we had gone over 
what seemed to be a dry riverbed. Mm -hmm. That actually happened the next day. Wow. As we were traveling across this, this dry place, I asked the director, I said, what is that? He said, that's a riverbed. I kind of put it out of my mind, but as we were touring the next day, I saw something that I will never forget. And my nephew, Zoe, who's also gone there, uh, helps me to frame up this picture. He's also our producer. So what I saw was maybe three to four women traveling on a four to five mile journey with a donkey and on the donkey there were four five gallon buckets and these women would travel to this dry riverbed and then dig down into the dry riverbed uh, a hole that is deep as as tall as you are wow. and then they would take a cup imagine your coffee cup or even something smaller than that and dip down into that hole because they wouldn't dip the five gallon bucket down in there it was the hole was too small so they would dip down and cup by cup they would scoop up water to go into the five gallon, gallon. bucket wow in hopes that there would be enough water down in the hole that they dug to fill up their buckets. So imagine how long it would take yeah. in that process. Put it back on those buckets, back on the donkeys, and then travel back. four to five miles back into the village. But the process is not completed because if they wanted to use this water for cooking, or drinking, they would have to boil it mm. to purify it. Um, what's, what's striking about all of that, that we should be grateful for here, is that much of the water there, in that it comes naturally out of that riverbed, sometimes it's filled with malaria, disease, mm. so many of the family's little children are impacted by dirty water. Wow. And we wake up every morning. Yes, we do. With access to, to water and it's, it's a quick process. It's a quick process to wash up. It's a quick process to shower or to even wash a load of laundry or prepare some type of food. And we don't even think twice where it takes us 15 minutes to do a task it can be a day or two days worth right. of of doing of journeying to get to the water and then <laughs> i mean i'm just imagining the process i mean you know we see things on tv right um and until you've actually physically been there and experienced it for yourself it may not it may not move you to be appreciative of what you have um, and then also remind you to not waste right you know it's just the little things like if it's the small things yeah, if I might add to that yeah um, in our tour we would see children on their way to school and these children would have no shoes on and they're just running and playing on their way to school but I noticed that all of the children had with them their book sack, but in the other hand, they would have a bundle of sticks. And I asked the director again, so what are they gonna do with the sticks? Why are the kids carrying sticks? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine why? I don't know. Okay. So the kids, each one of the kids would bring sticks to go on the fire to make their lunch. Wow. Which is the, the porridge. Wow. Yeah. And just think, <laughs> just think of how blessed our kids are 
and going to school. Wow. And they don't have to carry a bundle of sticks to go on a fire for porridge. To boil water. To boil water. Just to be able to eat. Yeah. Wow. Our kids go to school. Don't want to go to school. Don't want to go to school. First of all. <laughs> yeah. And some of the things that I hear of students who are at school. Yeah. <laughs> they might need a couple sticks. Exactly. So. <laughs> so. They need some sticks. They need some sticks. Okay. Well, we won't go there. Yeah. But even, even in, in watching them, I'm sure that you can see the joy that they had. There's so much joy with the simple things that they have, mm -hmm. a makeshift blackboard. And it really brings me to tears as I'm thinking about um, the things that they have and all the things that we have here, smart boards and so yeah. forth. I mean, the state of the art equipment. And these kids are sitting on wooden benches that have been made by the villagers that are made of cut trees and, mm. and that kind of thing. Um, we're, we're really blessed here. We are. And the community there, when it seems that they come together to provide, um, to make sure that the kids have what they need, and they, it's like an obligation that they feel to provide Absolutely. for them. We, we use the terminology here so loosely that it takes a village. <laughs> but we've actually seen it there yeah. and how the people come together to assist one another. It is just one large family. Yeah, so what it sounds like is that they have a keen understanding of what community right. really is. Right. Wow. So when I think about the rain, I'm, I'm grateful all day today. Every time I turn the water on, I'm yes. going to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. But I invite our audience also to be in prayer for our brothers and sisters in Sakuru yeah. that God would send the rain on that parched land. And not only pray for the rain there, but pray for a spiritual revival yeah. of rain here. Amen. In Cincinnati, we need it, Lord have mercy. In the nation, we yeah. need it on the parched ground that God will send a revival in the land. We're headed towards the Feast of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And I have great expectancy that there's going to be a tremendous revival. There's going to be a tremendous rain that's so desperately needed in our country. Amen. Thank you for tuning in for this week's edition of Mission Possible with Freddie T. Pyfus Jr. For more information on how you can get involved, please visit our website at zionglobalministries.org or feel free to stop by and see us on Sabbath at 5 p.m. or Sunday at our 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. services. We are located at 9180 Cincinnati Columbus Road in Westchester, Ohio, 45069. If you are eager to make a contribution, you can text Zion GM, one word, to 77977 and follow the prompts. We appreciate your generosity and look forward to connecting with you. See you next week. Yes,